Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are starting a new series, one that I'm really excited for. It's going to be on finishing ash, different techniques and cool ways that you can finish this because it's a very versatile wood. If this were just one video, I'd probably title it something silly like finishing your ash off, but uh, I'm not going to do that because I want people to actually find it and watch it. If you've been following my channel for well, any time at all really, you'll know that I did a great guitar build off build last year as part of the charity contest. I'm doing it again this year. These are cut off pieces of ash from last year's build. And I've selected the same kit in essence this year. It's the raw kit. It's a square from Crimson Guitars. Check out their website, crimsonguitars.com. If you haven't, they've got awesome kits there and they're sponsoring this contest. Um, so they're making it, well, easy for us to participate as the invitational builders like myself and also easy for us to raise some money for charity. Mine is the Second Chance Animal Rescue this year. So I've got some cutoffs from that and I'm gonna be doing the same kind of kit again. And I figured, I have some ideas on what I'm gonna do, but I figured it would make sense for me to show you guys some options for how you can finish ash. Ash is a, a very open grain wood and that allows for some very interesting techniques like the serus finishes and stuff like that. Now I'm t checking how many decent sized cutoffs I have here as samples. I'm probably going to go cut a couple of these in half thickness wise on the table saw here um, because I don't have a blade for my bandsaw at the moment. I'll have one soon, don't worry. And then today we're going to do step one. It's going to be a, a series, but we're not going to do one finish at a time. We're going to talk step one today, which is your prep. Prepping a lot of woods for finish is as simple as sanding them or applying a sealer or sometimes grain filling if they're relatively open. That's fine if you want a smooth, flat finish. Ash actually affords us some opportunities to do one of two things, three even. One, you can just leave it the way it is, and then you'll have a mildly open grain finish. Two, you can fill it, and because it's so open grain, there are some opportunities there as well, but you can fill it to get a really smooth finish at the end if you want something like a glossy, glass-like finish. Or uh, three, you can open it up more. And there are a couple ways to do that, a couple ways to really accent the grain to get those serous type finishes or some really interesting accented looks. So like I said, I'm gonna split a couple of these so that we can get a couple extra sample pieces and then we'll get into different ways that you can prep the grain on ash. So for starters, I'm just slicing these down into uh, thinner chunks. We don't need a seven quarter inch thick sample to be able to practice some finishing work. I'm just doing this on the on the table saw here because, like I said, uh, my bandsaw doesn't have the blade yet. Well, at the time of me doing this voiceover, it does, but uh, when I was making the video, it didn't. So it's actually not that difficult to do this on a table saw. You, of course, have to be careful. Um, we've taken here at the shop the, the guard thing off of the saw, but I'm still using a push stick. I've got a nice fence on this one. It's a good saw, so I'm not too worried. Just if you're doing this with a table saw, make sure that you're careful about it, that you do it a little bit at a time, that you use a proper push stick, etc. Um, so, yeah, you can see that my safety practices on this have improved. And then I'm going to clean them up on the sander here. Um, which is actually kind of dangerous because they're they're thin and this sander is very aggressive but i'm being careful you can see that we've got a couple vacuums hooked up to this thing if you are doing this on a belt sander at home try to make sure that you have dust extraction it's important uh, and wear a mask especially if you don't have dust extraction also if you're sanding small pieces like this find some other way to hold them if you can uh, I'm yeah I'm being a little bit foolish here I acknowledge that so this is one of those do as I say not as I do circumstances um, but one thing for sure do not try to do this wearing gloves okay any kind of power tool pretty much uh, in where something's moving like a sander or a saw you can't be using uh, you can't be wearing gloves when you're using those that's a good way to, to hurt yourself really bad so I'm Going in with some NGR dye stain here. This is alcohol based, I believe. Uh, actually, it might be something a little bit more complicated, but it behaves exactly like an alcohol based dye and it smells just like an alcohol based dye. So you can use an alcohol based dye if you don't have this stuff. This is the old stuff from Bellin. Uh, it goes a pretty long way, so I've still got a bunch of it, but Mohawk has basically taken over Bellin. They've uh, kind of reabsorbed the brand, if you will. So if you're looking for it, 
uh, look for it under Mohawk. You can take a look at the Amazon link in the description of my video if, if you want to help me out by using an affiliate link or mohawkconsumer.com. I believe is the site where you can go uh, take a look for this stuff. It's a good dye. It uh, It's not really, really easy to spread around because it dries insanely quick, but it's not that difficult either. And it soaks in really nicely, which is going to be good for what we're doing here. The next thing I'm going to do, a uh, different technique here, is I'm going to fill a piece on both sides. The first side is going to be just this wood filler. This is just a standard water-based type wood filler like uh, like you would get at Home Depot, the LePage type thing. Uh, so nothing fancy. And I'm adding a bit of the same dye, but you can use a number of different things. You can use pigments, uh, water-based dyes, acrylics even, to, to tint your wood filler. And I'm doing it black because that'll be the easiest for demonstration purposes. But of course, you can do a number of different things here as well. You can even uh, tint it a similar color to the wood if it isn't already, which it would have been in this case, to make it very subtle and look very even. But I find that kind of boring, so I'm using black to accent the grain, and I'm going to just mix this up nicely, or relatively nicely. I'm almost kind of palleting it out on the piece of wood as I go here. And then I'm spreading it around just using this popsicle stick and trying to get it on there relatively evenly so I don't have an insane amount of uh, sanding to do after. Although on a small piece like this, it still only takes a moment, so it's not a big deal. You will get a little bit of shrinkage with this type of product too, so it's okay to have a little bit of excess on the surface to sand back later. That prevents you from having to fill it more than once. So once we're done with that, I'm going to do the other side using a clear wood filler. This is an interesting product that I, uh, that I really like actually from Crystalac. It uh, goes on kind of white so that you can see it, a lot like uh, a water-based clear coat does. But then when it dries, it dries perfectly clear, which is really cool if you've got, you know, a dyed grain underneath or something interesting in the grain that you want to make sure you can see, but you want a really even finish after. You want that glassy kind of smooth look at the end. Well, a clear filler will help you get there. Um, and it's a lot quicker than building up, you know, six or eight coats of clear sealer. If you're using something like a polyester sealer, like a Simtech polyester, uh, you can fill in grain pretty quick with that. So you probably don't need to do a step with clear filler, but for most people who don't have, you know, pretty much a disposable paint gun, uh, yeah, this, this option works. For my next piece here, I'm actually using a sand blaster and I'm uh, blasting the grain to accent it. So the open grain is going to open up quite a bit more. It's going to get deeper and then, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's a good accenting technique. It gives us lots of options to be able to either dye that grain and do a sand back, burn it, fill it, lots of stuff that you can do with, uh, with this type of technique. So on one side of this, I'm going to leave it raw, and on the other side, I'm going to wipe on a dye. That's that's my plan. Um, now when you dye this, you've got a couple different options, and we'll kind of cover them as we go through this, uh, this video and the next. But you can dye it and then sand back the top to get clear wood again, or bare wood again. Or you can dye it and then seal it, and then once it's sealed, you've protected the top to a degree, and you can put something into the grain. And that's what we're going to do on that one. But uh, for now, let's move on. I'm taking my torch here and doing what I did on my last great guitar build off. I'm burning one side for accenting purposes, just lightly. And then the other side, I'm burning very heavily. This is a completely different technique. Uh, I'm not going to try and say the name of it in this voiceover because I think I go ahead and butcher it later. But then I come back with the wire brush and brush that off. And the, the brush, much like the sandblasting, takes a lot more material out of the open grain than it does on the closed grain, which is much harder. So it leaves us with an interesting deep grain look and uh, accented look because it's burned. Now back to our piece with the filler. I'm sanding off the black tinted filler. Um, this piece isn't in great condition. It's got a couple saw marks on it and whatnot, but it's not its not terrible. So I'm going back and, and sanding that off with 280 grit or 240 grit, uh, leaving myself a nice smooth finish to work with. And that's kind of the key here. That's what I'm aiming for is a nice smooth look. That's why I've done the filler on both sides of that piece. 
and there's an easy easier way to sand a, a small piece like that so you can see kind of the different options that we have going here from raw to dyed blasted burned uh, filled lots of different opportunities lots of different options when you're working with ash that's why it's one of my favorite woods to do finishing work on especially if i'm going for an interesting textured look granted if you're going for a uh, a fully filled and uh, you know glassy smooth look at the end it's actually a lot more difficult than some of the other options so <laughs> i guess it's it all comes down to a matter of preference um, here I'm doing the sand back on the dyed one. This is the piece that I dyed on both sides. This one's got a big blade mark in it, but you can still get the gist. So what's happened there, I didn't do any work to deepen the grain. Um, I just dyed it, and the dye is kind of sticking into the open grain, much like it does with something like a flame maple. And I'm doing a sand back on the top to take all the dye off of the closed grain so that you end up with the grain accented by the dye. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to go in with my sealer on the side that is fully dyed. Um, and this is kind of the opposite technique where you dye something and then you, you spray it and then you can go in and kind of push a different color into the grain afterward. And we'll discuss that in more detail in the next video. But I just want to light coat a sealer there because I don't want to seal up the grain, the open grain. Uh, and then here I'm doing similarly on my sandblasted piece. I'm putting some sealer on there to protect the closed grain so that I can go in and push something in and kind of squeegee in a, a gel stain or whatever I want really into the open grain afterward. So again that's going to give us kind of some cool options when we go to finish this off. All right I think that's our prep work. Do me a favor we're going to go through them all now but uh, let me know in the comment section below which one you're most excited for because we've got some interesting finishes coming up I'm not going to give away all of what we're planning on doing, but yeah, let's go through our prep work real quick. So we've got the one that we filled. We used our Bright Tone or our Crystal Lac product, the clear grain filler, which I'm really fond of, on the back here. Well, which one? Who's to say what's the back? But anyway, we used that on one side. Would have been nice if I'd done a better job sawing this. And then we did a tinted filler, a dyed filler, if you will, black on the front here. This needs to be cleaned up a little bit. That's gonna be really interesting. Looking forward to that one. Then we did our burn piece. So we've got our gentle burn accent on one side. This is what I did to my great guitar build off build last year. And then we've got the aggressive one that creates some added texture, really gives the grain some depth with the wire brushing on the other side. And um, that's kind of, I'm gonna butcher this, but that Shosugi Ben or whatever it is. Uh, forgive me. Anyway, that's what we've got on the other side there. So that's gonna be intriguing. Here we've got our sandblasted piece. It's just open on one side, but we've sealed it. Um, open and sealed. That makes no sense. You know what I mean. There's, there's nothing going in on this side or going on on this side other than the sealer. So this side has the die and then the sealer. We've got a couple options for what we can do with that. And in fact, this side, there are lots of things I could have done without sealing it. I don't want to do 20 sandblasted pieces for this video though. So there we go. This guy... Uh, had a saw blade mark in it. <laughs> anyway, I dyed the one side and sanded it back. So we've got that green accenting from the dye. And then on the other side, I dyed it and went ahead and sealed it. This is without any blasting, without anything to really increase the depth of the grain. So we'll see how that works. And I've saved myself two raw pieces here because we're going to play around with a couple finishes on those as well. Um, and I think anything that I do on these ones could also be done on the blasted version or the gently burned version. But I want to see how they look on just raw ash. We're going to have some fun here. So that concludes the first video of the series. That's the prep work. Uh, and we're going to come back in the next video and add some color and stuff and do some interesting techniques on these to up those finishes. And then we'll probably do a final part where the, the last couple that still need it will get the actual finish finish. And we'll compare all these and you'll have some cool ideas for how to finish ash. So yeah, thanks for watching the first video in how to finish your ash off. I, I really need to stop making that joke, but I, I wanted to. Anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it, helps me out. Remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this and check out the great guitar build off video that's coming up so you can see which finish I actually end up choosing once I choose one.
Life's full of tough decisions. Thanks again, guys. Hope you liked it, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.